Welcome to episode 21 of the 3 AM Fear podcast. The wedding photos from July 2009 show a stunning bride in a beautiful sari beaming with happiness as she poses alongside her new husband. But just a few years later, Jessica Patel would be found dead in her home in Linthorp, Middlesbrough, UK. And the killer would be her loving, doting husband, Mitesh Patel. This is her story. Hello and welcome to the 3 AM Fear podcast. I'm Nikita Ferrao, mystery and thriller author. On this podcast, I talk about real crimes and real people. Due to the graphic nature of some of this content, listener discretion is advised. You can find the episode show notes on my website 3amfear.com. Let's get started. Born on 16 September 1983, Jessica Patel was the first-born child of a Hindu couple in Leeds, West Yorkshire. Jessica was described as quiet, innocent and a good girl who wouldn't hurt anyone. She loved watching romantic Bollywood movies, hoping one day she would find her Prince Charming. Her sister Manal said that Jessica was a very kind and compassionate person from a very young age. In fact, when one of Jessica's uncles was diagnosed with cancer, she said that if she could, then she would take it from him. She said she had, quote, very fond memories of growing up with Jess because we were only probably about 18 months apart in age, so quite close together. She was always fun to be around because she was always happy no matter what. Always had a smile on her face. End quote. In an interview, her father said, quote, Jessica was the first child, a happy, calm child to what I remember. She was a good child, never any bother. End quote. Now, Jessica was a very clever child growing up, and in 2002, she went on to study at De Montfort University, Leicester. She later headed on to Manchester University, where she got a degree in pharmaceuticals. Jessica reunited with Mitesh Patel in September of 2006. She had known him since she was young. The two used to play together as children and then went on to connect during their university years. Now, Mitesh was very supportive of Jessica and overall, he was a very likeable guy. He would shower her with gifts and even offered emotional support when her mother was diagnosed with cancer and later passed away. Their relationship grew so strong that in 2008, Mitesh approached Jessica's father to ask for a hand in marriage. To everyone's surprise, Jessica's father said no. He apparently saw something that no one else did. But Jessica was madly in love and tried her best to convince her father. He finally gave in. To add to Jessica's happiness, her father even offered his back garden in Leeds as a venue for a wedding. She was over the moon with this beautiful gift that was given to her. In June 2009, her beautiful wedding took place. Jessica looked incredible in her bridal outfit. She now not only was married to the love of her life, but she was also pursuing her dream career in pharmaceuticals. Some time passed and in April 2015, Jessica and her husband Mitesh signed a lease on a pharmacy of their own in Middlesbrough. In the northeast of England lies one of Middlesbrough's most attractive areas, Linthorpe. This area is quite affluent with big houses, leafy long driveways and family-friendly neighbours. 
द बेस्ट पार्ट अबाउट दिस नेबरहुड इज इट्स वेलकमिंग कम्युनिटी एंड सेफ्टी दिस वुड बी वन ऑफ द लास्ट प्लेसेस दैट यू वुड एवर एक्सपेक्ट समथिंग एज ब्रूटल एज अ मर्डर वुड टेक प्लेस Jessica and Mitesh had also purchased and renovated their home which was just like any other homes in their neighborhood. Their beautiful home was older, spacious with big rooms and a large driveway. They now had a suburban lifestyle, a good business running and their family was set. But there was one thing missing, a child. and that's what they planned next not so long after in october 2015 they commenced ivf treatment but sadly after three rounds of these treatments jessica was unsuccessful in getting pregnant jessica was more of a motherly figure she always wanted a child and the very fact that she was unsuccessful devastated her but she kept this away from her husband with time jessica was so frustrated and tired with the treatment that she ended up being prescribed medication for anxiety and depression by her doctor the treatment was just not working for her finally in may 2018 the ivf treatment gave a result and three working embryos were extracted from her These embryos were fertilized and were to be implanted next month. So you can of course understand the happiness that Jessica was feeling at this moment. She was over the moon and it was quite clear from her expression. Her dream was about to come true. They were going to have a child. Unfortunately, life had something else planned for her. On 14 May 2018, At the young age of 34, Jessica was found dead in her apartment. The killer, she was strangled to death by her husband Mitesh. This is a 999 recording of Mitesh informing the authorities of what had just happened. Oh hi, I, I think we've been burgled and my wife's been attacked. Well, I've just come home. I was I was just out. I went to get a, like something to eat and see the lads at work and get my laptop. And I yeah. come home and the house is ransacked and she's just on the floor. She's got duct tape all over her and she's like unconscious. By the time police arrived at the scene, Jessica was found dead. She was surrounded by a completely ransacked home and was duct taped at her wrists. Her throat had been crushed. Like with most murder investigations, the first prime suspect was her husband. And so the police started asking Mitesh, where was he? What was he doing? And what did he think happened? Mitesh promptly answered by saying that they were both working at the pharmacy that day, which was their routine. While there, that day Jessica's father had come to see her. He gave her a hug. and told her that he would come again the following week mitesh completed his shift left for the gym and once his workout was completed he went to a local pizza place to get some pizza for him and jessica while there he sent a text message to jessica notifying her that he would bring a pizza his statement was cross checked with the cctv footage of the local pizza place This was around 7:30 p.m. Meanwhile, Jessica was working late at the pharmacy and had gotten home at around 7:10 p.m. As per Mitesh, by the time he got the pizza and arrived at home, he found his place completely ransacked and Jessica in this position. Her body was taken in for autopsy where the coroner determined that her cause of death was from the pressure to her neck she had been strangled to death but the killer had also attempted to suffocate her by using a tesco carrier bag around her head mitesh was horrified at what had happened because the locality that they lived in was said to be a very safe space at first the police weren't sure what was the motive behind the murder 
they tried to check if there was any robbery involved or if there was a potential serial killer on the loose but they couldn't find anything when jessica's family heard about the news they were devastated they immediately traveled to middlesbrough to be there for mitesh and help him during this time they tried their best to console their son in law but he wouldn't just stop crying they couldn't understand what went wrong who was it that was out to get their poor little girl jessica's sister and her father both tried to comfort their grieving son in law telling him that they were there for him and that they would support him but no matter what they tried they couldn't get the idea of jessica's body from their mind the police soon started their investigation they closed off the home and blocked the entire road they considered the possibility that this could be a robbery because the couple appeared rich from the outside they thought maybe this was someone who was keeping an eye on them and when the time was right this person attacked and jessica was the victim there was also a possibility that because they owned a pharmacy they had access to a lot of drugs and so they thought that maybe this was a person who wanted to use them to sell drugs or maybe they wanted to access drugs and that's why the murder took place because the house was completely ransacked they went through almost everything that was left hoping to find out what was missing from the house There didn't seem to be any sign of forced entry and so they assumed that this person was someone that Jessica knew. Jessica was known to be a very friendly person and she was always out to help others. And so it was difficult to understand who was this person. Could this have been a person that Jessica met over the last few days, few weeks, few months? She was the kind of person who would welcome someone into her home with open arms. So could this be someone who disguised themselves as a friend to get into the house? Anything could be possible at this time. The police started an investigation into the life of every person that Jessica knew, hoping to find someone with a motive to kill her. They also tried to get hold of the CCTV footage from the camera outside the couple's home because of course the person had to have entered the house through the main door. But unfortunately for them this was a dead end. Mitesh told the police that the CCTV camera was not working at the time of the murder and this caused a huge setback in the investigation. Just when the police thought that maybe they couldn't find anything or they couldn't find any other proof they had a major breakthrough Just 3 days after the murder of Jessica 37 year old Mitesh Patel was arrested on the suspicion of his wife's murder Apparently when the police were searching through the bedroom they found a hard drive that belonged to Mitesh This hard drive was hidden in a bundle of clothing under the mattress. And in this hard drive was the video of the Patel's own CCTV footage which clearly showed Mitesh walking into the house just before Jessica was murdered. This was the footage from the same camera that Mitesh had earlier said wasn't working. Mitesh never spoke about this hard drive and in fact This hard drive was switched off just 6 minutes before he made the 999 call. The footage clearly showed Mitesh getting into his home at 3:30 p.m. He had come home from the gym, he went inside and he didn't come back out. At 7 p.m., Jessica's car was seen pulling into the driveway. She had just gotten home from the pharmacy. Roughly 40 minutes after she arrived at 7:42 p.m., the CCTV footage captured Mitesh walking out of the house. 
As per his alibi, he was heading towards the pizza place. He arrived at the pizza shop at around 8 p.m. where he was captured on their CCTV footage. He spent a couple of minutes talking to the employee and left for home. Now, even if Mitesh had nothing to do with Jessica's death, he would have seen Jessica's body as soon as he walked in. Yet he waited nine minutes before calling the emergency line. Nine minutes. I don't know whether this is more of a shocking thing or a stupid thing that happened with Mitesh because out of everything that he had planned on killing his own wife, he didn't take into consideration his own CCTV camera, his own hard drive. I mean, he may have hidden it, but he kind of did a poor job with it. No one could have predicted that Jessica's killer would be found this way. After talking to Jessica's friends and family, the police got a far different idea of what Jessica's life was compared to what it seemed from the outside. Now, I'm going to go a little bit into Jessica's life and give you the real view of what was going on behind the happy-go-lucky Jessica and their romantic love story that was going on. There was a much darker side to this whole story. After marriage, Jessica moved in with her husband and his family. There were a lot of expectations from her, from his family. I'm guessing Jessica was hoping for a nice, quiet, happy life because she married the love of her life. But unfortunately, this was not the case. Her life was more stressful than happy. Her in-laws were never happy with her. They were verbally abusive and just a few months into a wedding, Mitesh's real personality came into the picture. He started becoming distant with his wife. He became verbally abusive. He was not the loving husband that she thought he would be. He was more controlling and abusive. In 2010, when Jessica's grandfather was very sick, she wanted to visit him. Mitesh did not allow her to do so. He did not like the fact that she would spend more time with her family and so he started to force her to distance herself from her friends and family. Her sister Manal told Jessica told her, quote, Mitesh won't let me stay, end quote. She added, quote, she said they got into an argument in the car over it and he hit her. End quote. There were also a lot of friends and family get-togethers that Jessica had to miss only because Mitesh did not allow her to go. The abuse took a bad turn that whenever Jessica would argue with her husband, he would hit her and so she started being quiet and distant. Mitesh also never let go of a chance to put Jessica down in front of others. He would insult her and she would always stay quiet. Mitesh would also tell a ton of lies in front of others. At one point, he even started telling their colleagues at work that Jessica was pregnant with twins. And he did this solely for his amusement. He knew that Jessica was struggling to get pregnant. He wanted to make fun of her, and this is the way that he did. Mitesh was a compulsive liar, and with time, he only got worse. He started keeping a lot of secrets. Jessica was a very intelligent lady, and it didn't take her long to understand what her husband was up to. She knew that he wasn't being intimate with her for a very long time. And there was a reason for this. She knew that something was going on. She just didn't know what. Jessica would often catch Mitesh on the phone with someone. And whenever she confronted him, he would just get up and leave. Sometimes, he wouldn't come into the bedroom until 4 in the morning. She had no idea what he was doing. 
she didn't know his passcode so she couldn't access his phone now the fact was that mitesh was contacting several people during this time he was always chatting and was even on several dating websites including grinder he was also particularly close to a few people he would invite them to his family home introduce them to jessica and even let them stay the night so if all of this was going on why didn't jessica say something why did she allow mitesh to do this well she did this because the people that mitesh was bringing into his house were men mitesh was secretly gay and jessica had no idea jessica was just happy to know that there was someone for her husband and that these people were her husband's friends someone he could confide in but she had no idea what was happening behind her back during this time that mitesh was meeting and hooking up with different men he had fallen in love with a doctor named amit patel he had invited amit into his family home let him stay the night and the same introduced him to his wife heartbroken and unhappy with her married life jessica tried everything to make her husband happy but at the end of the day she would lie in her marital bed all alone it was 2012 and mitesh was still in contact with amit in fact their relationship was stronger than ever jessica was still feeling a little lonely and it was then that jessica's sister divya noticed a text on mitesh's phone this text was on amit and it said quote love you too kiss kiss end quote she told jessica what she had seen but jessica just brushed it off she knew she could trust her husband and even with the wildest and craziest ideas that came to her head being gay was not something that she ever considered jessica tried to have a conversation with mitesh but he just turned it around and started pointing a finger at her saying that she was just being suspicious and that he did not like it by 2015 mitesh and jessica moved to middlesbrough and opened their own pharmacy jessica saw this as a fresh start to their relationship but for mitesh it was something else he was unhappy with the way that jessica's family was meddling in their marriage and he found this as the best way to get them off move to a different place far away from her family no one can disturb them this was kind of his way of making her sever ties from anyone she knew so now here she was all alone in a far off place with only her husband by her side as i said although mitesh projected himself as this loving doting husband on the outside on the inside he was equally evil to jessica he would hurt her on several occasions and whenever she cried and said that it hurt he would just laugh on several occasions he even shouted and insulted her in front of people at the pharmacy their customers even noticed jessica limping on one occasion after mitesh threw a cell phone to her leg during this whole ordeal jessica was undergoing ivf treatment and mitesh knew that jessica desperately wanted a child and so he knew that he could control her as long as this was happening now we get to 2017 the ivf treatment is not working and by now jessica knows that mitesh is into men jessica ends up texting him saying that the ivf treatment is not working and neither is this relationship she tells him that ever since they got married all she wanted to do was have a child but she was unsuccessful she asks him in fact she begs him to be honest with her and so he does he says that even though he had affairs with several men it was she whom he finally wanted to be with 
she suggests that they stop the IVF treatment, which gets him very angry. He threatened her by saying that if she ever stopped her IVF treatment, then he would leave her. But the cruelest part in all of this was that with Mitesh, Jessica could never get pregnant. This was because throughout this time that they were trying, Mitesh was taking suppression pills to make sure that his sperm count was so low that their chances of having a child was next to impossible. Mitesh was just putting Jessica through stress for the fun of it. Jessica spent a lot of time in front of Mitesh cursing herself for not being able to bear a child. When all this while, Mitesh knew that it was because of him that she could never get pregnant. Dr. Amit Patel had now moved to Australia and Mitesh was seriously considering moving there with him. This was not any simple affair. They were in love with each other and he was considering a life with him. With the IVF treatment that was going on, Mitesh asked Amit if he would be there with him, standing next to him. When Amit asked Mitesh about a child, Mitesh said, quote, She might not even get pregnant. We'll deal with it when it happens. End quote. Now while this whole IVF treatment was going on, Jessica had her embryos frozen and both Mitesh and Jessica had access to these embryos. So in case Mitesh wanted to, you know, get Jessica out of the way, he could easily do so and still access her embryos. So his ultimate plan was get Jessica out of the way, get her embryos, go to Australia, have a nice life, nice comfortable life with his boyfriend. It is sickening to think of what he is capable of. And the embryos were not all that Mitesh was thinking about. Jessica also had a 2 million worth of life insurance policy in her name. And after she died, all this money was going to her husband, Mitesh. By now, Mitesh had probably created a foolproof plan to get his wife out of the way. In fact, just three weeks before Jessica's death, he accessed the internet searching for the following. I need to kill my wife, insulin overdose. Plot to kill my wife, do I need a co-conspirator? Hiring hitman in UK. And finally, Hindu funerals for murdered women. Along with this, he also searched for properties in Australia to buy with the life insurance money that he was sure he would get. This was more than enough to know what was going on in his mind. Just a few weeks after this, on the night of 14 May 2018, Jessica returned home after working late at the pharmacy. She barely made it into her house before her husband caught her, attacked her, injected her with insulin and bound her with a duct tape. He forced a Tesco supermarket bag above her head to suffocate her before strangling her and breaking the bones in her voice box. As further evidence collected, Jessica tried her best to fight back, and she did. But just 20 minutes after the attack, she passed away. When he was sure that she was dead, he ran up and down the stairs of the house, opening drawers, throwing her belongings everywhere, trying to stage this whole scene as a break-in. He did leave her there and went to the pizza place to establish an alibi. But unfortunately, he forgot about the small CCTV camera that he had installed himself. He calmly waited at the pizza place, making sure he would get recorded, and then sent a text to Jessica's phone saying that he would be bringing pizza to his house. He knew she was never going to see this message, but this was a way for him to establish his alibi. Just before leaving the pizza place, he had a small chat with a staff member. 
This was all just to make sure that someone saw him, he got recorded and there was enough proof to establish that he was there at the pizza place while his wife was being murdered at home. Now everything would have gone according to plan. Mitesh would have been a free man, he would have had the money, he would have had the embryos, he would have had an amazing life that he wanted if it was not for the recording that he forgot to delete or get rid of. He told the operator that by the time he reached home, she was on the floor, she had duct tape all over her and she was unconscious. He kept saying over and over again, I'm here, come on baby, I'm here. Mitesh was arrested and the police took their chance to seize his and Jessica's phones. They found something quite interesting. Mitesh had a health tracking app on his phone and this app had a pedometer. It tracks and tells you how many flights of stairs you have gone up and down. And on the night of the killing, it showed that Mitesh had just shortly before leaving to get pizza, for some reason, was running up and down the stairs. The police believed that this was not Mitesh running up and down the stairs, but it was him running around the house, trying to ransack the place, show that it was burgled. He was probably opening drawers, pulling out things, throwing smashing stuff here and there and moving the body. Now quite similar to Mitesh, Jessica also had this app in her phone and it showed that after a certain time, the movement just stopped. This showed the exact time that Jessica stopped breathing. A few seconds later, the app showed a movement of 14 paces as it shows that this was probably with Mitesh taking her phone and dropping it just to show that probably the burglars forgot to take the phone with them. Not too surprisingly, Mitesh's phone also showed the exact same steps as Jessica. Now this proved that he was with her and he was handling her phone at that time. After searching the bedroom, the police found a hard drive that he had stashed in a bundle of clothes underneath the mattress. It had the footage clearly showing him entering the house. That night, Mitesh's belongings were searched and the police found syringes filled with insulin. There was also a duct tape hidden in the pharmacy which matched the one that was used on Jessica. The trial started in December 2018 at Eastside Crown Court and everything about what Mitesh was up to came out. Jessica's family and friends were shocked at what came out of Mitesh's mouth. They were unaware of what was happening behind closed doors. They had no idea that this cruel and abusive monster was living with their beautiful girl all this while torturing her. Some also spoke and said that they had seen a few of Mitesh's anger outbursts here and there, but they had no idea to what extent he could go. There were scratch marks on Mitesh's hands, which he said that he got while he was working out at the gym. At the same time, the police found Mitesh's skin under Jessica's fingernails and a Tesco bag in their home. This bag was confirmed to be the one that was used to suffocate Jessica. Her DNA was found inside the bag, which included her saliva and her blood. When Mitesh was given a chance to talk in court, he said that he never actually loved Jessica or wanted to marry her. He just married her because he wanted to hide his personality and make some money. He admitted, quote, I should have been honest with myself and I should not have married Jess. He added, I cannot explain how I felt. It was the fear of being exposed as an Asian gay man that was one thing and the other was that I was not going to let Jess down. 
I had married Jess and all her dreams were going to come to a crashing end. End quote. There were texts between Amit and Mitesh that showed that he knew what Mitesh was up to, but murder was not one of them. And all these messages that were sent from Mitesh's phone proved that murder was not something that happened spur of the moment. It was not an argument that happened that led to murder. He was planning this from quite some time. Combine the messages with his internet search history and Mitesh had everything against him. Mitesh was found guilty of the murder of his wife Jessica and was given a life sentence with a minimum of 30 years in prison. The information on his phone offering his exact moments that night was such strong evidence that it was in fact the first time that in the UK an iPhone health app assisted in gaining a conviction in sentencing someone to prison, the judge said. In the end, a poor wife who all she wanted was a happy marriage and a beautiful child lost her life. She put all her love and faith in her marriage. She hoped that no matter how brutal or how horrible her husband was towards her, someday he would change. And so she kept her faith. Little did she know, all of this would turn against her. Mitesh proved that he was a horrible person by showing no emotion or reaction during the trial or during his sentencing. It was later said that all of this came under honor killing. Mitesh believed that his sexuality and adultery would be considered dishonorable to his family. And so in his mind, he believed that whatever he was doing, it was right. He was doing it for his family. The same time that he was with his wife, he was also chatting with other men. He thought that maybe he could keep doing this and no one would find out. But unfortunately or fortunately, he met a man, he fell in love and he thought that he could take this one step further. I don't think he was looking for love as such in these dating apps. It was just by pure chance that he found. He did see a bright future for himself, but in this future, he did not see Jessica. Divya, Jessica's sister, said in an interview, quote, When we found out how he was treating her behind closed doors, you feel an enormous sense of guilt that someone who was as kind and gentle as Jessica had suffered. Why couldn't I have protected her better? It's hard because someone as nice as her deserved so much better. This shouldn't have been her fate. End quote. Jessica's story is not the only story. There are so many more honor killings that happened this way. So many partners who got into marriage by lying and cheating their way. One can only hope and try to learn how to spot these signs early on so that they can avoid such a horrible marriage. If you are someone who is going through domestic violence or if you see someone who is going through the same, then please speak up because you never know when it's too late. Some people are lucky enough to get out of domestic violence early, but not everyone. That's it for the day. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to follow me on social media, especially Instagram. The links are in my description box. You can also find the episode show notes on my website 3amfear.com. If you love reading thrillers, you can now check out my free ebook available on my website. Once again, thank you so much for being here today and see you next week. Have a great week and stay safe out there.